Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar on how to sell yourself in an interview. My name is Abby Pillsbury, and I'm the marketing manager for Mars Solutions Group. I will be kicking this off and introducing our speaker and handling the Q&A. Please put all questions in the chat, and we will answer them at the end. Before we get started, I would like to share a brief summary of what Mars does for those of you who are unfamiliar with us. Mars Solutions Group is an industry leader in serving organizations that require the best talent and data management solutions to help build a more connected and more profitable business. We provide a range of opportunities with Fortune 50, 500, and 1,000 companies that align with your professional goals, ensuring you are a good fit for the role and the company environment. In addition to employment opportunities, we also offer a reskill and upskill opportunity through a program called Mars Returnship. Mars Return to Program is a free on-ramp for returners, those with a gap in tech employment looking to re-enter the workforce, accelerators, those trained in technology in graduate school looking to gain practical knowledge, and changers, those in another career looking to break into the field of technology. Our exceptional graduates and partner companies enjoy a customized experience to meet the unique technical and interpersonal needs of all involved. I would now like to introduce our speaker, Nicole Whitbeck Donald. Nicole is our Senior VP of Operations and has over 14 years of experience in the staffing industry and has held senior level sales roles. Using her experience, she will give insight into how to incorporate sales tactics into the interview process to land your next role. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you, Abby. I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, so today, we're going to talk about how to sell yourself in an interview. I want to talk by or start by taking you through some bullet points that are important during the interview process. And then we'll talk about some do's and don'ts, um, as well as take your questions at the end. So like Abby said, as questions are coming through, just put them in the comments section for now, and we'll get to them at the end. So there are six ideas that I'd like to talk through to ensure that you're preparing for the full interview process from start to finish. The first one is to do your homework. So when I mean do your homework, I mean on the company, on their social media, um, any postings that they put out there, their website, really, any Google searching that you can do on the company, not only the company, but the people that you're interviewing with as well. You wanna research them on LinkedIn um, and social media if you can. And then on the reverse side, you want to check your own social media. Um, and just like you're researching them, they're gonna be researching you ahead of time, most likely. So you wanna do a quick check on your own social media Take a look at you know, photos that were tagged of you three or four years ago or recently um, that might not be the most flattering types of photos that are posted out there for the public. There is a section on Facebook where you can specifically look at your profile um, as an outsider would, someone that's not your um, Facebook friend, and you can see what photos show up, what shows up about you. So I would do a social media check um, and any other platforms, Instagram, Twitter, make sure you don't have any mean tweets out there for people to see. Um, but yeah, just make sure your social media is in check just as much as you're researching and looking into the company you're interviewing with. The second bullet point is really just to be yourself. You want to talk about things that you're passionate about in your work that you're doing now. Um, a good example would be any volunteer work that you do, any special projects that you've taken on at work. Um, what are some unique hobbies that you have? Um, some of my unique hobbies, so I, I paint. That, that's a hobby that I do and I love to talk about. I love painting. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so you could share any of that with the company so that they can get to know you a little bit more as a real person. The third bullet point I wanna cover is to compliment the company. 
and the people that are interviewing you. So there's a couple internal rules to this as well. So you wanna make sure you've done your homework on the company. That way you'll have questions and different things you can bring up during the interview. Um, so like I mentioned in the first bullet point, any social posts they've put out, maybe they've recently acquired a company. Um, you'll wanna tell them congratulations on that so they know that you've done your homework. But you also wanna ask some questions around that as well. Um, same with the interviewers and the people that you're interviewing with, but keep it general. You don't want to point out any specific things like photos in their office. Um, making an assumption about people in photographs is never a good thing. Uh, at one point, uh, probably five or six years ago, I was interviewing with a company um, and a woman, and she had a picture of children in the photo. And I had made the very wrong assumption that those were her grandchildren and complimented what beautiful grandchildren she had, when in reality, those were her children, not grandchildren. Needless to say, I did not get a call back from that interview. Um, so you don't want to get too specific or make assumptions. So keep it general. I like your scarf. That's a great hat. I love your tie. You know, things like that when it comes to compliments or that, you know, social media post you put out about so-and-so's birthday was so funny last week. Um, those types of things. So number four is share your success stories. When interviewing for a good example of this would be a sales position. You want to make sure that you're sharing your metrics, um, what amount of revenue you've produced for the company, how you've met and exceeded your goals. That's it. That goes with any position that you are applying for. Um, sales was just a good example. Bring some tangible things with you that you can show. I produced you know, X, Y, Z last year for the company, my goal was 1.5 million and I exceeded it by 500,000. Specific examples go far during an interview process. Um, and it's okay to talk about your successes. I think specifically women tend to not talk about how great we are and some of the great work that we've done. Um, and we should do that more. And I have to get better at that my own self with myself. Um, don't hide, you know, the great accomplishments that you've done. You want to make sure to set yourself apart from other people that are interviewing. So bring up those accomplishments, bring up those goals that you've had, that you've exceeded, and anything you've done over the top uh, would be great. So number five is asking questions. One of the most important bullet points that I'm going to talk about. Make sure that you have some questions prepared ahead of time. Um, what I do in an interview is I typically have like a small notebook that I bring with me. And as I'm preparing for the interview, I'm on social media, I'm on their website, I'm looking at the specific job description and I'm taking notes small notes in the, in the column, and I'm jotting down usually at least four questions that I can remember to ask during the interview process. So it's obvious to me when I have this notebook and I'm taking notes during the interview, but it's not obvious to them that I've written these notes down. And that reminds me, oh yeah, I have these questions that I can ask during the process. Um, so you're prepared and you feel more prepared too. Also, as you're interviewing, when they're bringing up different topics or different things about the position or the company, kind of keep that in the back of your mind so you can remember to ask questions about that as they're going, and it really shows that you're paying attention during the interview. Um, the last thing I would say on this topic is 
if you do all of this correctly, you're going to be able to not only ask questions, but ask meaningful, great questions that they'll remember. So the last bullet point that I'd like to talk about is follow up. You're going to want to make sure to follow up with at least a thank you email or call, um, but also I recommend a handwritten card. Nobody does this anymore, and that's really going to make you stand apart from other interviewers. Um, in the last probably year, I can tell you I've received two handwritten cards after interviews. Both of those people got hired, and that's out of hundreds of people that I've interviewed. Um, so handwritten card will make you stand out. You'll remember, or they will remember you for writing that card. It's, it's just a really great like added thing to add on to the interview process to really sell yourself that much more. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you include thank yous to each person you interviewed with, but also the admin staff or whoever you know, facilitated the interview or helped get that interview set up. I send them a thank you card or a thank you email or both as well. I think it's really important that you include everyone in the process. So next, let's discuss some do's and don'ts when it comes to interview questions and answers throughout the process. Do show your excitement. You wanna be excited about the interview. They wanna know that you want this job. Um, so make it obvious, but not over the top too much. Um, do ask the interviewer if they have any additional questions at the end of your interview. So once start once things start wrapping up, ask um, you know the main person or whoever is interviewing you. Do you have any additional questions for me that I didn't cover throughout the process that I can answer for you now? Do thank everyone involved. I'm saying that twice because it's super important. Make sure you thank anybody who's involved in the process. Um, the person that greeted you on the way into the building, tell them thank you on your way out, be polite. Do make sure there are no distractions during a Teams interview, a Zoom meeting, whatever platform you're using. More and more first interviews are being done um, during like a video instead of in person. So you're gonna wanna make sure your dogs are distracted you have no cats like walking through the camera view, stepping on your keyboard. Uh, one trick that I use is I do close my office door during meetings. I have a sign that says do not disturb. So if there are family members at home, they don't come bursting into your office. They can see the sign clearly on the door. Um, yeah, and you know, no background noise, do the best you can. Things happen. You know, you can't plan everything perfectly and most people understand there's gonna be something that pops up on a video, it just does. But yeah, do your best to make sure there are no distractions. So don't overshare personal things. You wanna keep it pretty um, basic when you're talking about your own personal experiences. They're not gonna wanna know that, you know, this morning, your dog got out, you had to chase him around the yard for 15 minutes. You're so sorry you're 10 minutes late for the interview because this, that, and the other thing. Um, just keep it pretty basic and not oversharing. And then just be who you are, be your authentic self. Don't try to be somebody you're not because that's gonna show through and they're gonna pick up on that right away. So. It, I mean, you're gonna get the job. Let's say you get the job and you were pretending to be some, somebody you're not during the interview. Now, what are you gonna do? Carry on that persona for your entire career at the company? That doesn't make sense. So just be yourself. 
uh, don't try too hard. Don't try too hard. Um, and that goes along with being authentic to, to who you are. I think those two are very similar because that also is going to come through and show if you're just trying too hard. If you are interviewing at a company and it's 45 minutes to an hour away, give yourself an extra 30 to 45 minutes. The worst that can happen is you can show up in their parking lot and you have to sit in your car for a while. You don't want to be late. That sets the tone for the whole interview. Um, if by any chance something does come up and you are running late, which you shouldn't because you'll be showing up early, make sure that you call and let them know so that they don't think you're just, you just don't care. Um, but definitely, definitely don't wanna be late for your interview. I recommend that you show up early, you find somewhere to park, get yourself together, maybe look over any notes you took, get ready for the interview. It'll help you feel a little bit more prepared. And then you're not gonna feel so rushed because nobody likes it when you're running late to an appointment or meeting or something and you're just rushing, running into the door. You don't have any time to compose yourself. Um, so just make sure that you're not late for your interview. So one of the really great things about working with Mars is that we have amazing recruiters here that are really great at helping people prepare for interviews and they go over things like I just did and then some. Our recruiters will even get specific with you into the job descriptions and they can even do some practice interview questions with you here at Mars. So thank you so much for entertaining and joining me today. I really appreciate it and I look forward to your questions.